From the Weather NorCal Command Center, this is your morning update. Your weekend weather update is made possible by Caltrans District 2. Hey folks, good morning. If you know me, you know I like one word in particular, and I think today's weather and, you know, into tonight, I think it kind of describes it nicely, and that is rambunctious, right? I think it's going to be rambunctious out there. That really is a long and short of it. We have some very active weather across the area, so let's just cut to the chase. We have a lot to talk about. First things first, the thunderstorm activity. There's some lingering instability across the area, and uh, it's just enough to work itself into something magical, right? We got that thunderstorm activity really increasing, especially down in the valley as we head through afternoon and beyond. Now towards Siskiyou and Modoc County, uh, again, snow levels, they're going to be dropping. We're going to be talking three to 4,000 feet as we hit over the next 24 hours or so. So definitely a little bit lower than the last couple of days. Notice those temperatures also cooling down there. And out towards the eastern mountains is where I think we're going to see those highest uh, impacts in terms of travel uh, when all said and done with it. I'll discuss that more in just a few moments. Out towards the north coast, off and on showers and thunderstorms throughout the day. So we can definitely expect that there. There are those mid-50s. I think this is also where we're going to see those higher rain totals compared to everyone else. That's pretty much that classic climatological peak, right? Head a little further inland, you get those uh, kind of leftovers, right? Some heavy downpour still possible there. Trinity County, similar story there, cooler down in the mid 40s across the area. You can kind of see that range of 40s and lower 50s. That's kind of what we're talking about across the area. So let's take a look at the future cast. Next six hours or so, we got that widespread thunderstorm activity really pushing in, especially west of I-5, along the coast especially. Notice that snow there kind of hovering in that three to 4,000 foot range, even over I-5, uh, north of Buckhorn Summit here near the ski resort as well. And we might see some accumulation as well on I-5. I think Caltrans is going to stay really kind of diligent about that, right? They always are. But, uh, you know, you might want to consider the possibility over the next several hours of keeping those chains, you know, kind of on hand at a moment's notice if you have to go traveling in this corridor as we head through this afternoon and into this evening. Notice the thunderstorms really continuing to push east through the valley and points east as we head through this evening and into tonight as well. Still kind of lingering. Lots of snow out there in the eastern mountains. I'll discuss the impacts on that more in just a second. But even as we head into tomorrow, I think we start to dry it a little bit. I say a little bit. We're not going to be totally dry. Notice it's still kind of scattered activity across the area, and there is still some leftover instability, for lack of a better term, across the area. Notice you see some pop-up areas of maybe a thunderstorm or two. I do think the atmosphere is conducive for that, but it's not going to be like today. It is very scattered as we head through tomorrow, and I think the higher chances come back Monday, then we dry out Tuesday. I think Tuesday is the best shot at drier weather, and then I think beyond that, we get back into some more active weather, to be honest with you, but I'll discuss that more in just a few moments. Let's take a look at the winter storm impact. So this is what I'm kind of expecting here as we head over the next, I would say, like I said, 24 to 36 hours. Notice the higher impacts down here on either side of Highway 70 out there in the eastern mountains. So we're probably talking some pretty high impact stuff down there. Uh, some major, you know, minor to moderate impacts possible here, uh, just north there of uh, Highway 89, right? Southeast Siskiyou County. So we're talking there. And then of course, in the lower elevations, we're not quite low enough to have any issues besides that rainfall and thunderstorm activity, but still, Definitely some impacts there, especially in some of those higher mountain passes out there in the eastern mountains. So we'll keep a close eye on that and see how that evolves there. Rainfall totals. This is what I was talking about there. The coast, as usual, classic climatologic peak, has some of those higher totals, two, three inches. But notice out here, I-5 from Mount Shasta City to Redding and out towards the eastern mountains, you might see some higher QPF, which is called quantified precipitation forecast, uh, kind of indicates the rainfall totals even out there as well. So, you know, we're not seeing, you know, six, seven, eight, nine inches of rain, but still two to three inches of rain, uh, rain across the area. Yeah, I definitely could see it. I definitely could as we get uh, kind of that lingering rainfall through Sunday. Now, let me show you the big picture future cast. This is kind of interesting. Again, Tuesday, yeah, I think Tuesday is their best shot at kind of widespread dryness. Still some clouds, but check this out. We start to get in this wave train pattern. There's a system coming in through the midweek. Another system coming in Thursday through Friday. We got a lot to talk about here later on in the week. So Mike and I, we definitely have uh, some job security as this forecast continues to become more and more unsettled in the big picture. So let's just go ahead and take a look at some seven-day forecasts here as we head over the next several days. Again, there's that thunderstorm and shower activity lingering into tomorrow, looking like as we head towards Wednesday and beyond. That's when we pick up those showers and storms once again. Monday and Tuesday, not quite is robust here in the valley, for example. Notice those temperatures staying, you know, kind of in the 60s through Tuesday. Then we cool back down in the 50s when those systems come back Wednesday and beyond. Taking a look at Wairika, for example, there's those snow levels on average about 3,500 feet. So we'll call it three to 4,000 feet. Still chances Monday. That's what I was talking about. Tuesday is, like I said, I'm kind of thinking the dry day. 
And then those snow levels continue to drop past Tuesday, towards Wednesday, towards Thursday, towards Friday. Notice the progression there, temperatures decreasing, snow levels decreasing as well as that Arctic air gets reinforced across the area. Finally, let's take a look at Mount Shasta City for a good example here. Nice cross section of the area. Notice those snow levels again falling in line with the rest of us in the 3,500 foot range or so as we head through today and tomorrow as well, but it's really more scattered tomorrow than anything else. Monday, Tuesday, looking less unsettled. Then as we head midweek and beyond, the wave train comes, Arctic air reinforces, we get cooler. And I'll tell you what, we increase those rain and snow chances across the area. Thanks for joining me for this forecast. Of course, I'll be back with you this afternoon for more fresh from the Weather North Cal Command Center. I'll speak again with you soon.